seats, please. Yeah, I'll leave the blurb. It should be in there. Yeah, it should be in there. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight's school committee meeting. The mayor had a prior engagement. He was here previously for finance and uh, had to leave, so I'll be filling in for him. Um, could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God individual with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we, um, we start the meeting off with a hearing of visitors and I do see uh, one person who signed up, um, Jacqueline Healy. Jackie, would you like to come up? Good evening, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, can you introduce this gentleman next to you? This is Jim McAvoy, former um, Rockton High School Band Booster Association president. Hey, hi Jim, how are you? Evening sir, how are you? Good, good, okay, the floor is yours. Okay, well my name is Jackie Healy. I am a parent of a former student here as well as a current student. I'm also here as the president of the Band Boosters Association and have a concern for the students and the music instrument program and the ability of um, teachers to um, be available to continue the music program. I understand there's a shortage and I'm sure Mr. Macrina can discuss this further, uh, what the needs are of the music program, um, but we're concerned about the program and the budget. Oh, I know. It's, you know, it's, it's obviously a $16 million uh, budget deficit. Um, so, you know, we are looking under every stone for funding. Um, and, you know, everyone on the committee, I know, shares the, the overall concern. Um, so we, um, you know, we will commit to continue to look for funds um, and to work to try to, um, you know, supplement or enhance as best we can. Um, but we do have to... Um, you know, open the schools and we do have to make sure there are you know enough teachers in front of our students um, Certainly. You know, class size is definitely a priority but um, I, I you know I can assure you we're all aware of all the different areas that there are deficiencies in um, madam superintendent do you want to address um, yes I, I couldn't agree more I've had conversations with mr. McCreener actually this evening during the regular school committee meeting, I will invite Mr. McCreener up to talk to you. So the concern is uh, normally we had, or normally during our previous years, we start instrument lessons with students as young as fourth grade. And again, because of the cutbacks, which we are experiencing in every area across the board, we're trying to find a balance, and that would probably eliminate fourth graders. And Mr. McCreener can explain a little bit better as to what the plan would be under the present uh, teaching staff that we have available. So what I will assure everybody, first of all, I can't thank the band boosters enough. I know what you do for our children and our families and people come to our schools and choose our schools because of opportunities through band, through the arts, you know, through um, our athletic programs. So we understand how critical it is to have you as partners. We need you beside us to be fighting this $16 million deficit. We are willing to listen to to ways we're talking, uh, you weren't here earlier, I'm not sure if you heard us talk about equity and education lawsuit. We've talked about a proposition two and a half override. So we are looking at every bit of funding that we can and we're going to need the support of all of the groups that are out there and continually to support our youngsters to be uh, advocating with us for proper funding for our students. Okay. Thank you. item on our agenda is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the bundling of routine items um, that the school committee has reviewed 
And um, at this point in time, any member of the school committee can remove one or more items for more detailed discussion. Uh, is there anyone on the committee that would like to address any of the particular items A through J? No? Mr. D'Agostino. Uh, item D and item F. Okay, so um, can I then have a motion to approve A, B, C, E, G, H, I, and J? Okay, all of those without G. G. So we're going to do the a motion to for consent agenda except for items D, F, and G, correct? Okay. Some, are you making the motion or are you pulling another item out, Mr. No, Gorman? Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> motion to accept the consent agenda minus the items D, F, and G. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, Mr. Diagostino, since you went first, uh, do you want to address item D? Sure. Um, and I, I can kind of take DNF are kind of one and the same. Um, they're both accounts review meetings. And since this committee reviews the expenditures that, at, that have been approved as they're being spent, I thought, you know, with the uh, budget that we're facing, it was important to highlight this. Um, so we met um, first on July 13th at 6.15 in the evening. <coughs> um, reviewed uh, invoices listed under four different warrants. Um, um, I won't get to reading the, the actual warrants. I think, if I recall, there were, um, I want to say, wasn't there about 100, did he say, that we collectively had, or close to it in that particular meeting? Um, yeah, uh, POs that, that we had um, requested for review and had uh, the accounting office pull for us for review. and, and um, we approved except for two purchase orders, um, which we wanted to get some additional information on um, in that meeting. Um, and then that meeting was adjourned at 8.15 in the evening. So that was the first one, item D. And then I just had it. Now see, six, that's what I thought. I'd... No, all right, all right, I'll be all right. Okay, and then again, we met again August 1st. Uh, we took it easy on the accounting department that night. Um, I believe there was uh, something close to, what is it, 40? Yeah. 40 or so um, uh, POs that were reviewed that evening um, as well. Um, and again, um, we um, also approved the two POs remaining from the previous meeting um, that, um, we had asked for some additional detail on. We got that information and were able to approve um, uh, the, were able to approve the, those POs. Um, and that is it. I just wanted to go over those reports because I think, you know, account review is easy to not really know what that does and that's why I wanted to mention that. Just and again, I want to comment that when you look at accounts review, you're looking at hundreds, as you said, when you talk about a $220 million budget, purchase orders, running our school. Right. Um, it, it truly is an education in itself to see the operation and how it functions. And I know it's hours of your time on top of the meetings that you attend here. So right. you know, thank you for, for um, delving yeah, into that. We generally meet monthly, and, and it's not a, you know, generally, uh, there is one meeting that was a little shorter, but generally, these are two hour, two and a half hour, three hour on rare occasion, but yeah. usually two to two and a half hour meetings, you know, because it, again, all three of us are submitting things we want to see. And, and, and I have to give um, Mr. Bandis a lot of credit because we'll, we'll, you know, each submit 25 to 50 items that we want to see. And we show up and, 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 and he's got as many as 150 items all printed out, ready to go for us to review. And I know it takes a lot of work of him and his staff to do that. But um, so I, I appreciate them too, because they're putting in a lot of time. Thank you. Thank now, you. who's on the committee is yourself, 
Ms. Plant uh, and Ms. Asak. School committee member Azak and school committee member Plant. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, any further discussion on items D and F? Do you want to make a motion? Sure. Motion to approve items D and F in the consent agenda. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, Mr. Sullivan, item G. I just wanted to mention it, Tom, because if you were sitting over there, you'd have mentioned it. Just so the people at home know that this is such a large grant, $10,000 from Bill Belichick. I just wanted to read it, that the Bill Belichick Foundation announced its 2017 grant program offering a $10,000 stipend to recognize deserving athletic communities or organizations in need of financial support. The grant will take lacrosse programming in the City of Champions to the next level by realizing three specific pivotal goals. One, grow the lacrosse program to benefit more high school age youth across the City of Brockton. Two, to introduce lacrosse to younger students. Three, maintain and improve academic performance for all Brockton students. I just wanted to mention it to him because it, it is such a large, it's a $10,000 donation as a grant. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's definitely a worthwhile grant to um, pursue. So this grant is being uh, submitted for the application. Um, Bill Belichick, obviously, um, everyone knows Coach Belichick, and we um, certainly appreciate and hope that we will receive this grant. Um, the lacrosse program in Brockton uh, is basically has come to fruition um, due to, uh, I would say, uh, Dr. Murray's um, involvement over at West. Um, it's a program that uh, a few years back he was um, instrumental in bringing to that school. And as students matriculated from West to the high school, they basically um, you know, wanted to continue and pursue that sport. And what's um, nice is that um, there are lots of kids that are interested, and if this grant is, um, is obtained, it will uh, increase the capacity for students to participate. The, um, you know, the, I, you know I, I don't know much about lacrosse, just watching um, recently, but um, you're, unlike baseball, which I was a baseball player, you know, nine people on the field, and um, at times not a lot of action. But with lacrosse, it's constant movement, constant line changes. Um, you know, so many kids, so many more students get to participate in the game, um, and it. Uh, and obviously, Brockton is um, is uh, I would say behind the other surrounding towns with regard to this uh, sport. Uh, so it's nice to see it um, it flourish really. You know, in Brockton, but. Um, uh, credit needs to go to uh, Dr. Murray on this one, um, but it, it's definitely been well received. And I know last year the students did very well. It was the first year that it was a JV sport, and um, at first uh, no one thought they'd win a game. But towards the end of the year, they started winning uh, pretty much all the games the the, the uh, second half of their season. So it was really nice to watch. But um, um, Excellent grant, and hopefully we will we will receive that. Um, so, Ms. do your job. Yes. Yeah. So, Mr. Sullivan, would you like to make the motion to submit that Bill Belichick Foundation? Yes, I, I make the motion, <coughs> an authorization to submit the Bill Belichick Foundation grant for ten thousand dollars. As item G. Okay. All in. I'm sorry. We need a second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Wonderful. Okay, we move on. Communication, uh, report of the superintendent of schools. Yes, um, I, I will ask uh, for a moment of silence. Um, we have two youngsters, uh, and I had to really talk to, again, Laurie Mason in our special <coughs> education department, about two youngsters that were students uh, in the Brockton Public Schools that passed away this summer. Uh, one is 19-year-old Del Flew uh, Dorville, who was uh, in outside placement, but a student that attended South uh, Middle School prior to going to the May Institute. 
uh, very sad, again, 19 years old, and these people are always a part of our Brockton family. And the other is little Miguel Martinez, six years old. Um, I'm told he loves school. He spent three years at our Gilmore preschool and on to the Baker. He was often called the mayor of the Gilmore school. So our sympathies and prayers are with both of these families. And again, I would ask uh, for a moment of silence. Thank you. And again, I, I don't think we realize uh, when you talk about people that become a part of you in a very short amount of time. And I love hearing and a family telling us that the best part of the child's day was when they came into our schools, they were part of the schools. Like every child, they developed friendships, they felt part of something bigger than themselves. So, um, you know, we'll continue to support our families and these families in particular. Thank you. Um, next, I want to talk about uh, our summer programs. Many of you I know, if you come up to Brockton High School or many of our schools, it is not a place that closes down at all in the summer. It's very much an open campus with a lot of activity going on. And I know a number of you will join me, and I just want to call out uh, a number of the programs. If you, we were talking earlier during our finance committee meeting about community school programs, which offer everything for preschool youngsters all the way up through high school youngsters. This past week I was able to run over and see Raise Up Basketball Camp, over 100 kids, a one or a two week program taking part in our gym, high school students, college students acting as mentors and a safe place for our kids to be. All our community school programs from the Get Ready Sports, Act One, Scene One, had their uh, production uh, this past Friday and Saturday evenings. Um, you've got your preschool uh, programs, you've got math camps, all kinds of things for our students right here in Brockton with uh, very good um, economic opportunities you know, for our students. We also had, and we talked earlier about the diploma program, and we have an offshoot of that is the summer school program. I attended that graduation a little over a week ago. Um, we had close to 20 youngsters that did not finish up in uh, June with their counterparts at Brockton High School, but were able to finish, cap and gown, high school diploma in hand, on to college and career. And these are the opportunities that you continue to provide. We also had Edison Academy graduation. I know Dr. Murray attended uh, in my place. I was down at the superintendent conference. And as you heard, you had over 200 graduates uh, this summer. You also had the Footbridge program from our Huntington School, soon to be Gilmore School where our students go to Bridgewater State for a couple of weeks of opportunities on a college campus, working with college professors along with our Brockton teachers, high school, college students, supporting academic learning for our students. I also attended the Power Scholars uh, program graduation over at the Baker School last Thursday evening. You had 140 youngsters, grades two through five, 86% attendance for uh, over about a six week program where the students are there from eight in the morning till two, 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, very pleased with the academic piece. There was a camp piece. Again, support from mentors, college kids, high school kids, a collaboration with the Y. I want to thank um, the YMCA for all of their support and coming together with some grant money from the Y, support from the Brockton Public Schools. And when we start to lose grant money and we continue to be able to support these programs, that's important for our community and certainly to support our younger students. Also up at the high school, the Empower Yourself Aviation STEM program. We had about 20 students from a middle school and Brockton High School taking part in uh, the month's program this year. It involves, again, mentors from the college and high school level, our teachers involved, obviously, um, Cedric Turner and our Empower Yourself organization. Uh, and, and again, great opportunities for our students. So I want to thank everybody that took part in those programs and made terrific summers for so many of our kids uh, in the Brockton Public Schools. On another note, um, I want to mention that we received, uh, and this is from the governor's office, $150,000 in a 21st Century Learning Center's grant. And as money starts to dry up, this money is going to go to the Brookfield Elementary School. It'll offer academic and enrichment programs after school. This is through the community school office. 
We continue to look for additional grants. Next up on the list is looking to support a grant for an after school program at South Middle School. So we continue to look at opportunities. We have not received word on that, but we will be uh, applying for that grant. Um, I want to switch to a bill that has been sent to conference uh, to the Education Committee. And Brockton is known for its support of its Eng English language learners. Back in 2002, there was a bill passed where there was a limited amount in a student's native language where the student could be inst instructed. We have SEI classes where our students are taught in English. There is some support for their native language. But we have done an excellent job with your dual language programs, your SEI programs, your transitional bilingual education programs, to the tune of people coming to Brockton and seeing our educational offerings. What this in conference committee is saying is that it cannot be so strict. And they're trying to allow districts to have, uh, again, uh, some autonomy in making decisions as to how to best instruct their English language learners. So this is important for Brockton. We will continue to follow this uh, as it goes through the conference committee uh, on education. Um, I also want to um, talk about uh, two programs. One was you just heard um, Jackie Healy uh, and Mr. McAvoy come up and talk to you about support for our music program. So I'd like to first invite uh, our director of our music program, Mr. Vinnie Macrina, to come up and to share with you uh, some of the reductions that we will see in light of our budget going forward. I anticipate you will receive a number of phone calls about this. As I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with Mr. McCrean the other day, we will continue to work through this like we're working through a $16 million deficit, doing the best we can, not leaving any stone unturned if there's a funding source. So Mr. McCrean, can you give us an update on where we stand? Sure. Um, the important thing about the, the, the program as, as it stands right now, um, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we are one of the largest, probably the largest music program in the state of Massachusetts. Um, a lot of our kids have gone through great plays. It's been a, a great foundation of music. I'm not trying to sell this. I understand the situation. I was here in 1985 talking to Matt George during two and a half when we all had to come in and talk. It was the last time I said he was, unfortunately, it was about budget things. Um, we got slaughtered. Um, everybody got slaughtered back in those days. Question is more, this is more of an information for you people to understand. Um, in the middle schools and the elementary service, close to 1,000 kids. Unheard of, totally unheard of. Then we have the high schools, and then you have, but the music program has two parts to it. We have classroom during, from K all the way through high, uh, high school, and then there's our instrumental size. We provide kids services, um, where in a lot of places you say, okay, let's do after school. Our kids couldn't afford, because after school becomes a private thing, and I don't think a lot of these kids could pay $25 for half an hour lessons. So it's growing, it's growing immensely in all areas. It used to be one, you know, especially in the minority area. These kids are coming up and we're enjoying the high school. And these are all a lot of the bright kids coming up here. Um, and uh, we would lose a lot of good kids if this program wasn't here. Let me put it in the words of a, 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 our uh, uh, principal of one of the schools in this area that it's a private school. And I, the principal would call me to say, um, you know, uh, she says, we'd like to start a music program because we don't have those. We're losing a lot of kids. And, uh, and by the way, she turns around and she says, you know, Mr. McCrina, you cost me a lot of great kids because we can't offer what you people offer out there. So we're, we service a, a, a great deal here. The problem is this, that the way it is right now in the cuts, um, we will do everything that we can possibly can. We, we, my, we're, we can change around. I've been here before. I've been many times since, uh, since in, in the 45 years that I've been here do, doing this thing here. But unfortunately, if it stands the way it is right now, I would have to take teachers from whatever's left over because now I, we got ripped four teachers everyone else out, music and uh, uh, phys and whatever it is, it, just jailing around. But I, now I have a fifth one because I also had someone that resigned and not retired, so that's so far it's not been filled. I would have to take this portion to put them in the classroom, and then you're only going to have end up with two teachers to do the entire middle schools, elementary, and high school. Um, now, how do you do that? 
Um, we can try a couple of things. Uh, instead of starting two classes, fourth and fifth grade for one year, we'll start just fifth grade or fourth graders, no fifth graders, because the other thing too is people have invested money into this now. This is not just, okay, I'm gonna go from here, we'll eliminate one more third class. People have rented instruments, now these are fifth graders, and then you, you're gonna say, okay, what do we do to it? Plus, the dealers that have come up to us uh, that this services for many years and they've been keeping their prices down for our kids who brought them they, they're, they're a third higher in other school system, but they, they, they because we do such we started over 450 new kids last year That's unheard of So what happens is what do you do with those kids? What do you do with them? The, the parents have to know this that's basically what this is. This is an information thing. So I'm not trying to say, I understand what, what we're going to go through, and I know you have to take care of the regular classes and all that stuff before in the classroom and so on. But I think parents, in my case, this is what makes us different than the other stuff, is people have invested money into this for two years now. They've been paying rental on an instrument, and what happens? Do we don't do it? And, and the other two schools that I teach us that I have left over, which schools do I do? Do I just do one school? Do I do, you know, I'm going to actually, I'm going to go to the schools that's got the most, obviously, that's still trying to maintain a group going down here, or else in a few years when it's time for the uh, Huntington School Parade, there isn't anybody marching, and there isn't going to be anybody for the vets, and there isn't going to be a halftime. So if we start two years, in, in say four, four, four years from now, there'll be nobody coming to the high school. So it's kind of a dilemma, and we're all in this, and, and, and I'm here. But the way it just stands right now, if I'm stuck with just, I don't get absolutely no help at all, you know, I, I know we're not going to get all five. Maybe later on we could. I mean, like you said, as, as, as money comes in. But I have to know the dealer to know whether, what is he going to do now with these 400 instruments that he has purchased? That's not our problem, I understand. And, and, and they, they've been good about it. What am I going to do with all these kids now, these parents? We, they have to be notified somehow and that's why I want to be a little public here today so the parents see this to tell them that there is a possibility that your fourth grader next year is not going to go be having any music class, uh, instrumental classes anywhere and you know I have to pick and choose who we service and it's not you can't do things after school we did it at two and a half you know how long a two after school program lasted two and a half two months it got totally destroyed doesn't work doesn't work anywhere so that's basically what I, Kathy and I, we've been talking about this I, um, uh, in regards to that. Um, and, and this is the only thing that I'm afraid of. And it's not something I can say, okay, September, middle of September, okay, I have to kind of let people know. And then now my teachers that are going to go into the classroom have never been in a classroom. I know it says music, but music is a giant <laughs> monster. It's just not one thing. There are many different, many, many different things. Uh, you know, so that's kind of a dilemma that I'm worried that I don't have a plan. So when we open up, that I can say, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is where you're going to go. We're going to come down here. I've done this enough that we can eliminate some things. But if I'm only left with two people, that's going to be huge. We'll cover all the classrooms, but that side, and it's unfortunate because those kids will get music during class. The, the singing chorus will get chorus, but on the instrument side, it's getting, it's getting a kick. It's, it's just getting a bad thing, which we need. That. That's that's all the things. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we are the biggest, um, uh, the most visible ambassadors of this school for many, many years. So, um, and I know, and I understand the situation. Don't misunderstand me. I've been here before many, many, many times in front of all the superintendents, basically Matt George during two and a half, than the other people out there. So that's the only thing I think people have to know, parents have already invested, and we're not talking about 20 kids. We're talking close to 800 to 900 kids citywide. And as somebody told me, that's a, that's a good problem to have. Well, not, not really, sometimes being good, it's, it costs. So that's basically what I wanted everybody to be aware, that we need some, somehow we need some help a few more, one, two, whatever, or later on, or some other stuff. We're willing to, to cut a, as much as we can. Uh, like I said, my big dilemma is, which school do we cover? Some schools will not have it. They're not gonna, it can't. By the time we travel all over the place, we're gonna have larger classes, instead of having, you know, we're going to more of a, a larger group. And, but those people have to do two jobs now, do over here, plus they have to run around and, and cover for middle uh, elevator. 
So that's, you know, that's the biggest dilemma right there. And again, I, I do understand where we're, where we're all at, but certainly are willing uh, to, 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 uh, to do something about it. So I'm just letting you know. This evening, because again, when we had conversations this week, we are talking about making sure parents are aware. Right, um, right. And we can talk about our priority list as we continue to I try to find savings that we talked about earlier during our finance meeting. But I wanted to make sure that uh, we were staffing our programs so our K-12 to programs have classroom instruction in music. And that has been our priority with our classroom teachers. This has been something additionally that we had offered our students for as long as I can remember. Oh, uh, this has been going on since 1971. Yeah. That's, as a matter of fact, that's how I got hired. Hmm? They, were, they were increasing the instrumental program. I did my student teaching here, and I was ready to go to perform on the road. And James Green, at the, at the time, the chair said, goes, so, don't you remember our staff? He goes, no, OK. Two, later, two weeks later, Bob Jones called me up and offered me a job. That would, that would how many positions do you need in order to maintain uh, the services for the fourth graders? It's, it's basically not so much to maintain fourth grade, it's basically to cover the schools. That's okay. the big thing, it's to cover the schools. If we have to eat one year and just start just fifth graders, uh, just fourth graders or no more fifth graders, at least we'll have some kind of a continuation. Um, that's that's the big. We can we can hit that and, and come up with a lot, with larger school. It's trying to get people to go all schools be service. That's basically what it is. And understand we got six middle middle schools. Everybody's been in. We run around in the elementary plus high school. So, so, so how many how many positions down? We're down right at the moment. With everyone else down four, but we're down five because, like I said, the the, the teacher at the uh, Asheville school retired, the classroom teacher. So I got to take somebody from an elementary school now and send her over. That's not an easy job to do. And that middle school is a whole other different animal. Uh, so that leaves that leaves me with with you know with four to fill in. And if I take those four, I got so about five five people left. If I have to take four and put them in a classroom. That leaves me with two people in, in to do elementary. That's you know, Mr. Cardell, which has already serviced the high school too, and uh, Mr. Fantucci, who's does West, and you know, and seven other schools. So basically, it's four positions. Well, that, kind of like that. If we can't any, let's put it this way: any additions to what I have now certainly will help. That will help. Ms. Plant. of our finance meetings. I asked what about, not only is it an academic loss, our students benefit a lot from these programs that you offer, but also I brought up the point of the financial right. loss. Because I did bring this up, our parents, they rent an instrument, they're renting it for years, they put a lot of investment in that. Right, right. And then be told that they all that time they put in. Some of them have gone up to 100, so 800, 900 dollars, especially the people that have already invested for since the fourth grade. And you're paying interest on. I mean, I've, I did this for my my daughters. Yeah. You know, you're paying interest on right. that because you can't just go out and buy, right. um, you know, a right. multi hundred dollar instrument. Right. This, people don't have that money. Right. They're paying the interest on it, right. and it is pretty affordable when you look at it as a monthly payment because we are getting that deal. But that's our that's kids. Are, our kids are getting rental half of what some other place is doing because we do a large number. And the, there's people like to service those kids. You know, we, we, we were blessed with Ray, the, the Raymond, uh, Ray, Raymond um, uh, for 45 years. Then they closed down. We have this new person over here. So we're going to continue on. They give us scholarships. You know, it, it, it's it's just it's just a lot. And I don't have I don't want to go into what it does to kids. You're looking at a, a young man, someone here who came into this country who went through all the problems that a, a student comes in. But the one thing that got me straight that I, I was good at was music. So you look in someone as an example, especially for that that was my forte. I mean, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. So all of a sudden, the seventh grade, they gave me algebra. And that was kind of difficult. And you know, that didn't work out very well. But that was my attachment to over here. And it has saved in all the 45 years that I've been teaching in the school system, the amount of kids that I've seen, we have kids playing in major symphonies out of this school system, 
major symphony, not local stuff. And we also have kids that would have absolutely quit. We have kids that come in here. There were uh, immigrants like, like me that, that I have right now, and half the time I'm talking to them in half Italian or whatever it is I could do then. You give them an instrument, and, and the parents said to me, what have you done to him? Nothing, he said. He just is enjoying me school. So we all know that that's a great thing. I'm worried about the parents. I'm worried about equality. That, you know, and I also, please, I want to understand, I do understand, um, but we can't cover. Like the Davis School, that, tricky. Uh, it's a huge school, she's got, go, uh, uh, so we could do our programs, I gotta send some people. I had the flexibility to do that over there. I don't have that flexibility with, with, that, with five teachers out, so, all right? I'd also like to point out that for our elementary students, this may be the only extracurricular activity they have. Right. Um, we don't have, you know, you have right. a great band here at the high school, yeah. but there are so many other activities that our students can be involved in. Right. At the elementary school, they have art, they have music, and that right. may be all they have. Oh, you're right there. You're, you're, ab you're absolutely right there. Yep. Absolutely. When we all, yeah, absolutely right there. Thank you. All right. Anyone ask any question? Mr. D'Agostino? Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to thank you for coming tonight to, you know, uh, bring this to our attention and also in addition to the cost that parents have incurred, also I, I've heard you talk before about the academic benefits that the students who are involved in these programs um, get and, and, and doing better academically as well. So I think, you know, obviously, if, again, right now we haven't got any money that but right. it's certainly a priority because it's a great opportunity for them. Parents have shelled money out. But again, I know I, I, I've uh, paid close attention when you've talked about the fact that this also, the skills they learn in learning music also translate into academic well, success. Th 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 there is no doubt. There's no doubt about it. That's been proven 100 yeah. percent, even more and more and more now that uh, you know, music, music and intelligence, I mean, you come and see the kids at the high school, you know, my high school band, 99% of the kids are in the nationals, so in the honor roll, and half of them in the national, they're all, they're, they're all in there. And even kids that just kind of started okay, all of a sudden, right. they, they, they come in and they get involved, hanging around, and I, I, you know, I, 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 this has been, a great, has been a great place, watching these kids go, and then all of a sudden, I see them, you're a doctor now? Uh, that's, it, it, but, and still playing, by the way, you know. So, Great. I, all right, anybody else? And again, I think it's important as you start to put together your priority list, you've heard some suggestions when we left our finance committee meeting um, about what's ahead. Um, I think it's important to hear yep. the areas we have concern yep. about. Again, this was just a, not a, a kind of sales thing, more of an informational thing. I think it's important, especially when it comes to, to that area of, of people already invest a lot of money into, into it. Very much, Mr. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very Mr. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm sorry. Is there somebody else that wanted to speak? We had the sign up for hearing of visitors. We'd be happy to have you come down. Hi, good evening. Hi, my name is Peyton. I'm going into seventh grade at Pliff Academy, and I was introduced to the French horn in fourth grade. I took right to it. My elementary teacher saw my talent and encouraged me into private lessons. My teacher pushed an audition into BYSO, where I made it as a sixth grader. Last year has been competitive and if it wasn't for my beginning, where would I be? My sister just graduated, and most of the Ivy League acceptances came from this mu music program. Thank you. French horn is obviously not an easy instrument. So I'm sure you do a wonderful job. We're proud of you. Thank you. On that note, also when we talk about priorities, uh, when we left uh, in June, um, we were disappointed in a grant that we had hoped for, a turnaround grant for our, our known school. Our teachers spent hundreds of hours putting together a plan, a grant. We felt very confident. Um, we were not awarded the grant, but we have had conversation with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. 
there is possibly money, uh, maybe not $300,000, but what they're calling school improvement grants that do not come at the beginning of school. They come probably sometimes late September, early October. What they want to see is a commitment from the district in order to support some of those turnaround practices. So I would like to invite uh, Principal Colleen Proudler. I know she has uh, her um, instructional leadership coach, Carrie Pearson. Carrie, do you want to join her? I know you worked very hard also on the grant. Um, I met with uh, Colleen uh, this actually a few times. We are meeting with our uh, DSAC, which is our support from Desi Joan Tuttle. We'll continue to work very closely with Desi in the hopes that we're able to see some of this money. But as we start to look about priorities, which is what you just heard with Mr. Macrina, we had some priorities for adjustment councils. We can go up and down the list with a $16 million deficit. But it is important that you hear about some of the small, what we're considering, priorities at the Iron Known that we feel would put us in a better position for a school improvement grant and putting forward our turnaround plan. Uh, Colleen? Okay. Um Thank you for having us. Um, I would actually like to start by saying there's a few things that Mrs. Smith has um, offered to do for the school that is not attached to money, so I thank her for that. Um, the school is going to have the resources of Karen McCarthy, director of Title I, and Dr. Ethan Cancel, who is, I think, the director of accountability. They're going to work very closely with us this year. They will be meeting with us regularly, really helping not only myself and my leadership team, but also the staff to really look at the data from a number of different vantage points and really make the best decisions possible that we can for kids to improve instruction. So that I think is going to be very helpful. In addition, um, as, Dr. S as Mrs. Smith did say, the teachers worked very hard on this grant proposal. It was truly a grassroots effort and they spent Saturdays after school, evenings, really working on um, figuring out the best way to help the kids. One of the things that they were very passionate about was the need for more instructional time. And a $300,000 grant was never going to be able to afford us with an extended learning time. It's just not enough money. But what they did do with a lot of creativity and a lot of commitment was come up with a plan where they would pick the children up at 8.50 as opposed to 9 o'clock. And without getting into all the specifics of it and um, the details, it was going to capture a couple of extra hours a week of instruction. It was going to allow the teachers to meet regularly for common planning. And it was going to really allow them to do a morning meeting session in the morning, which is a social emotional piece that was going to help set the tone for many of my students so that they could really be accessible to learning right off the bat. What um, Mrs. Smith has agreed to do to help us out is that whole plan is contingent upon us hiring some lunch aides we want to be able to use lunch aids to not only cover the lunch and recess period for the teachers, which then allows us to change our schedule, but it also allows the students to really have a very full recess period where the Playworks program, which I'm sure you've heard from other schools about, will really be fully implemented at the Arnone School because these lunch aids will be hired to really work with the kids during lunch and recess. We wanted to provide some additional training for them, specific to PlayWorks and making sure that the recess period is the most beneficial time that we can have for the kids. So that was one important piece. Um, another important piece of our turnaround plan was the Reader's Workshop model. As you know, um, I came to you, I think, a couple of years ago. We had started the um, Reader's Workshop process with the TLA, Teacher Learning Alliance, and I had two very passionate lab teachers who came and presented to you. They were so passionate, they convinced the rest of their colleagues to come on board and try it the following year. Last year, I actually had four, five lab teachers. Unfortunately, I've lost two of them to riffing. So we're back down a little bit with the number of lab teachers that we have. And the one thing I heard over and over again from my staff was, we want to have that same level of professional development that the lab teachers had. And if you recall, TLA's original focus was really to develop capacity for coaching amongst our ELSs. Part of that is to have authentic practice, and that's where the lab teachers come in. The unintended consequence, which I felt was a really positive one, was that my teachers all want that hands-on lab classroom teacher experience that those first few brave teachers had. So 
a big piece of this grant was trying to scale that up throughout the entire school and really provide equitable, equitable professional development for all of the teachers. Right now, as part of um, that program, we get five days of coaching, which is wonderful, but it's really focused on the lab teachers and trying to help the other teachers get the training and get the, the face time with the coach has been a challenge. So Mrs. Smith has agreed to double that and help us get 10 days of training which is what we had put into the grant. So that is another piece that we're very, very excited about. I think that will go a long way into helping truly scale that model up and shore it up throughout the entire school. Another component to this grant was um, guided math. So guided math is similar to Reader's Workshop. It's a, it's a process and a structure for teaching math instruction so that you're providing children with lots of face time with the teacher and lots of opportunities to practice. It folds very nicely into all of the resources and the materials that we already have here in Brockton, and it's something that Dr. Ronan has been working on very closely with the elementary school IRSs for the last probably year, year and a half. We were able to already secure a little bit of funding, so I have got five teachers attending a three-day training session starting tomorrow, actually, on guided math so that those folks are actually going to act as my lead teachers through in the school in conjunction with my IRS to really help bring that to fruition as well. And it's also important, as we're going through all of this, that teachers have collaboration and chances to plan. Four or five years ago, we did do something with the state through CCE, and we had a lot of training around professional learning communities. Over time, you know, staffs change and schedules change, and we really felt that it was a wonderful time for us to fold ourselves into some of the work that other schools in the district are doing through Teachers 21. So Teachers 21 is a program that, program, it's a group of consultants who help the teachers really develop teacher leadership and develop capacity for planning and collaborating together, looking at data, planning lessons, reviewing what's happened, looking forward, making plans for what's going next, providing some professional development opportunities for the teachers as well. Mrs. Smith has also um, been gracious enough to allow us, because that was another piece of our grant, that we're going to be able to have lead teachers in each grade and then an overall lead facilitator for the school. And the training that those folks will, get, will gather will help further our mission in terms of professional learning communities. I think that's most of it. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, this entire plan really hinges upon us being able to switch our schedule so that we can capture regular common planning time. In order for me to effectively use the lunch aids and the support staff that already exists in my school, I need to make sure that they have adequate training and that they have someone to have kind of oversee them, mentor them, and help them with this entire process. I have an MTA in my building. Um, I actually have a few MTAs in my building who have worked really, really hard in this area. So what we would like to do is I would actually like to empower one of my support staff within the building to sort of take on that leadership role. I think it's important to have not only a leader, but someone who's going to be in the cafeteria and in the, on the recess yard day in and day out, really helping those folks and overseeing this Playworks program so that they can... Um, really do the right thing with it. So in order to make that sure that that happens and that that training occurs, I had asked for a $500 stipend for one of my support staff to be able to take on that role. And again, this is uh, a total of about $90,000 when you talk about the lunch aids at 45, uh, the TLA training and consulting for 10 days at 20,000, teachers 21 with lead facilitator, uh, training at about 18, a stipend uh, for our teacher leader, uh, about 24000 and about $500 for the Playworks facilitator. And we're looking again, as uh, Principal Proudler told you, for possibly an MTA who is actually in the cafeteria and out on the playground uh, with the staff that would be there. So this is a priority. We're looking at, again, there was concern with our monitor site visit at uh, both the Arnone and the Baker. But my priority right now, and I think the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's priority, uh, is the uh, our known school. We do believe that there is a possibility for grant funding very soon. So we need to take a look again as we um, see additional money, as we look at 
reconciling the unemployment, which again, we have teachers coming off of unemployment. I anticipate we will have some savings. I would like to make this a priority. We've been talking about it, and I think it's critical right now academically for our students, the planning our teachers have done, uh, and the district going forward with keeping our level three status. Uh, any questions or comments from the school committee? Mr. D'Agostino. Um, I just want to take a minute and applaud you and your team for um, all that you do. And, you know, I, one of your uh, kindergarten teachers is a friend and constituent, and um, I have I talk to her frequently about um, some of the unique challenges that, that you all face. And, um, you know, uh, your entire staff, including both of you, of course, step up to the plate every day, and I'm glad to see that you know, we're going to be able to give them some additional support because they certainly need it. So I, I applaud and support everything you're doing. And the other thing Thank I you. want to comment on, um, when you talk about the um, change in the time, we will work with our union to take a look at that. So we will look to develop a, an MOU to make that time change, which, which is really critical for a lot of the pieces that we're trying to put in place. So I just want to make that clear. Yes. There is still some negotiating. There mm -hmm. is still some putting together. This is a priority and figuring out how we move forward. But I'm confident uh, also with the money that is dangling out there yeah. that, and we're working very closely, as I said, we're going to have Joan Tuttle, our DSAC, our district support from DESE in the district working with our teachers and support to make sure we are aware of opportunities out there for schools that they do not want to see become a level four school. Certainly not because of a lack of funding. I'm actually, I'm, sorry, go I'm actually going to meet with um, Joan Tuttle on August 22nd at 10 o'clock. I thought it would be a great way, that's my first day back at work, and I thought it would be the best way to sort of frame the entire school year is to really let her know where we are in terms of our schedule and hiring and staff members and then also really get her input into scheduling where we are as far as hiring people, making switches, professional development, looking at some of our MCAS data and getting her expertise. Ms. Plant. I'd like to say that our, our known students are very lucky to have you and have your staff that are very dedicated to doing what's best for our students. I want to thank you for all the extra work you put in on this. I know you, you are very dedicated. They're very lucky to have you over there. Um, you. You, have, you have great staff over there doing what's best for our students. And thank you, Superintendent, for looking for ways to support them, even if it can't be financial at this time, to work with our school and, and see what improvements we can make over there. And um, hopefully we're looking at being able to fill some of these um, financial needs as well in the near future. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay, thank you thank both you very both. much. Thank you. Um, in moving forward, we have our, I just want to remind everybody, the School Registration Office and Parent Information Center becomes very busy as we start to get into mid-August, which I cannot believe we're getting into mid-August. So I want to remind everybody that the hours start to change after the 18th of August. We have additional time on Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, into the evening from 4 to 6.30 p.m. We are closed on Fridays. When you get to the September uh, 4th, we're closed on Labor Day, but again have extended hours right through the opening of school. And that is on our website. I also want to mention uh, on an unemployment update, when we last left you with our um, finance update, there was talk about unemployment and we looked into that with our uh, contact in the unemployment office. And again, when a teacher or an individual, not just a teacher, uh, is required to report every week, um, if they have then received written confirmation that they have a position for the following school year, they are no longer eligible to collect. So that was a question that we had last week that I told you we would get additional information. So again, it does help us. Um, we'd like to be able to bring back everybody. Unfortunately, with a $16 million deficit, that's not reasonable. And at this point here, as people get jobs uh, or come off of the unemployment rolls, that's uh, additional money that we're able to support some of your priorities. So we'll continue to work on that. Um, and lastly, uh, I know um, uh, School Committee Men Azak has some good news for us on cradles to crayons. I'd like to take an opportunity to um, thank 
uh, Kerry and her team at Cradles to Crayons. Um, just a little, uh, uh, although students are in the midst of summer vacation, Cradles to Crayons is one step ahead in preparing children for the new school year. Since 2006, Cradles to Crayons Ready for School program has worked to help level the playing field for all children by providing essential items needed to start the school on the right foot. This year they're aiming to help around 70,000 students. Last year I believe it was 40,000. Um, and I'm excited to say that once again, uh, hopefully it'll be an annual tradition. Uh, this is our second year and they have graciously donated 2,000 backpacks with uh, just basic school supplies from notebooks, folders, pencils, uh, crayons, color pencils. Uh, some of the older children will have calculators. And we were also fortunate they've donated um, 2,000 books. So, and this is one of the books that was actually donated. So we do have this for some of the younger students. Um, I will be dispersing the backpacks to the various schools and I'll be working with the adjustment counselors and the principals and if, if it's a first come first serve basis so if there's a family that's in need financially um, and they they can use a little bit of help with some of the back-to-school supplies feel free to reach out to us contact um, uh, Central I believe and, and they'll be able to get a hold of me and we will coordinate so thank you again to Cradles to Crayons they came through for us once again well, they have been a great partner. Uh, I enjoyed speaking with them last year. Um, oh, and this is actually one of them. Yeah, I was just going to say. So they, there's numerous colors, great quality backpack, and the supplies, it's, it's filled with supplies. So it's great to get them started for the school year. Uh, so it does take a little bit of the financial burden off some of the families. Um, it gets very expensive, and it is a burden uh, for most families, especially if you have more than one student. So hopefully this will help them out, just get them started. Well, thank you for all your efforts. How many backpacks did you pick up? 2,000 backpacks. And I do want to thank um, our facilities department. Uh, they ventured into Boston with me early this morning. We went into Brighton and we packed up with two trucks. So thank you to Mr. Thomas and uh, Mr. Thompson and the facilities guys for helping me get the backpacks back to our schools. Thank you. Lisa. I'd like to say that I know that when Joyce has been working on this, there was an issue at first how we were going to get the backpacks and I think she deserves a lot of credit for jumping right on that saying we're going to take care of that I know you spoke to Mr. <coughs> Thomas and you got it done so I think um, you're thanking everybody else and you deserve a lot of credit thank because you. you really made sure that this happened and, and thank you thank I you, say, thank you. Um, last year I believe they worked with different moving companies and there was a little bit of an issue trying to get us a moving truck so a couple of phone calls to Mr. Thomas over here and um, he said we'd be more than happy. It's, it's a nice donation and we will help you get those backpacks back to our school. So, so I'm going to have to find out what the secret is with getting Mr. Thomas to do what you need. It's a couple of phone calls. <laughs> well, I, I kept nagging him so he finally gave it. <laughs> oh, nagging him. Uh, I'm kidding. But I would like to invite them to one of our future school committee um, meetings, if we could, like we did last time. Please. Yeah, we'd, I would be, like we'd that. be thrilled to have them on board. Definitely. And thank you. And I want to finish up the evening with, again, um, a notice of a youth opioid prevention grant from the office of Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy. I had the opportunity to meet her uh, in mid-June, uh, thanked her again for all the support. Um, this is a grant uh, in the amount of $30,000. It'll support our middle school students at our seven middle schools and also Frederick Douglass Academy over a two-year period with uh, health and wellness uh, curriculum for our teachers, um, weekly uh, group counseling from a recovery co counselor from Independence Academy, uh, and also students against destructive decisions after school clubs. So there are a number of opportunities for our students you know that our community has been fighting this for a long time. It's interesting to see it on a national level when Brockton has been involved with making sure it's in our curriculum, talking to our students, uh, and making sure that our students are making good decisions. So again, uh, every little bit helps. I would say this is coming at a very good time. Uh, when you turn on the news, it's not getting any better, unfortunately. So the, uh, the more reinforcement we have, to our students, especially in those uh, formative middle school years, I think the better. Um, it's, um, it's obviously something that uh, affects every uh, 
uh, town and city in the Commonwealth. Uh, we are not unique in this, but um, uh, this is definitely um, a welcome grant. It's monies that uh, will be put to good use and hopefully uh, we'll have a young person in that uh, moment when they're making a decision go down the right path rather than the wrong path, you know, so. Anyone else? Okay, great. And the only items to refer to subcommittee, I do have a retreat coming up with our executive team to work on our uh, superintendent goals for this upcoming year. So we will need to set aside a time. That meeting is going to be on the 15th of uh, August. Um, we'll be uh, working at Stonehill College for the day and looking at our strategic plan updates, looking at our goals to present to the school <coughs> committee uh, going forward. And that is my item to refer to subcommittee. Okay, great. Uh, any unfinished business? Uh, do we want to um, submit the report of the Finance Subcommittee meeting uh, of August 2nd? Do you want to do that this evening or do we? Okay, so, all right. All right, um, well, what we can do is basically under unfinished business, we can, um, I'll um, read the report and then we can um, take action on the one item that was recommended and that was to reinstate a track coach. Um, so on August 2nd, uh, 2015, uh, 2015, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm off two years. 2017, the Finance Subcommittee met over at the uh, Arnon School at approximately 6.30. Uh, we discussed updates with regard to um, matters the superintendent was um, uh, going over with the BEA with regard to uh, positions and duties. Uh, we also discussed an update with regard to transportation and busing. We um, um, were informed that um, the busing uh, recommendation for right now by the mayor is that we do not um, extend the walk zones because the mayor seems um, um, optimistic that we'll be able to um, have enough money throughout the year for our bus, uh, our bus uh, budget. However, we are discussing and putting into place some double runs uh, with respect to some of the uh, bus stops that are the closest to the high school. Um, we also had a report by Mr. Thomas with regard to the work that was being done over at the, um, the Gilmore and the uh, Barrett Russell, and um, that work was going very well. Uh, we also discussed um, uh, the current status of the uh, track enrollment, and Mr. Gormley had made a recommendation that we fund an additional track coach for safety reasons due to the increase in um, participation. We also discussed um, positions. Uh, we had a reduction in force update. We talked about class sizes. We reviewed the um, chart with regard to the different schools and um, uh, class um, enrollment. We also talked about the um, uh, data entry position that the superintendent uh, was concerned with. Um, and we also, uh, I also informed uh, the committee that we had a, um, a notification from Representative Cronin that she was addressing with Speaker DeLeo uh, items that uh, were removed by the governor from the budget and she was uh, seeking to have those items uh, placed back in, which would, if done, uh, benefit the district. Um, we also had an update with regard to uh, the equity and education lawsuit by um, Superintendent Smith and we also discussed um, priorities in the budget barometer um, and the support that um, uh, some of the classrooms would need with regard to uh, paraprofessionals and MTAs. Um, so in, in a nutshell that basically is the summation of the finance subcommittee meeting that took place on August 2nd. Um, um, could I have a motion for someone to uh, approve the minutes of the Finance Subcommittee of August 2nd, 2017? Motion to 
<laughs> so who's, who's opting? Which one? <laughs> Motion to approve the minutes of the Finance Subcommittee meeting from, what was the date of that? August, August 2nd. August 2nd. I thought it was 2nd. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I stand corrected. August 1st. Okay. Um, would you like to second, Ms. Plant? Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And then with respect to the item with regard to the uh, track position uh, with a cost of 4138 um, to reinstate that track position, um, can I have a motion to do that? Mr. Gormley, would you like to do that? I'd like to make a motion to reinstate the um, fourth assistant coach for the cross country track team um, at the cost of $4,100 for the 2018 uh, budget. Okay, uh, further discussion. Mr. Gormley, could you just um, <coughs> summarize uh, the need? Yes, thank you. Um, Last budget, we reduced this uh, number from four to three because there was a significant uh, drop off in participation with the men's team. Uh, they had finished the season the previous year, I believe, with um, 10 or 12, 12 uh, runners. This year, um, for various reasons, that number has increased to around 60. And it could increase more as we get closer to the, the school year. Uh, we haven't started the uh, fall sports season yet. Um, so, with the um, type of training that these athletes do, they're out on the road, they run up and down Belmont Street, uh, West Chestnut Street, and they have to cover a lot of ground. Um, and then with this large number, especially of new students, they, there would be need for supervision even at the high school. So, um, with that said, it, it became clear to me that um, if we had uh, Twenty-seven thousand dollars. I think we could spare four to uh, help this group of students out as it, it increases uh, in in participation. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Nothing further. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, do we want to address tonight's finance subcommittee um, because we did take some action? with recommendations on additional positions. So I think it makes sense to get, um, okay. So uh, this evening at six o'clock, the finance subcommittee met on August 8th. Okay, yeah. And um, at that finance subcommittee meeting, we um, discussed the budget barometer update. We discussed programs. We discussed SPED positions, phys ed and adaptive phys ed, phys ed positions, and we spent a considerable amount of time with regard to um, funding certain positions uh, from savings and um, some grants uh, that um, were able to fund um, particular items, uh, such as uh, an adapted phys ed position, as well as a um, SPED department head position. Um, so that, um, that basically was what was discussed this evening from 6 to 7 at the um, Finance Subcommittee meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the August 8th, 2017 Finance Subcommittee meeting? A second. Thank you, Ms. Azak. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Okay. So now this is going to be interesting because we did quite a bit in terms of bringing back some positions. Um, so um, with the savings from, um, from nursing, um, from basically contract nursing positions, uh, which um, produced a savings of $160,000, um, we were able to call back uh, three additional teachers at a cost of $40,000 apiece, uh, one Spanish, one technology, one science. Um, we were also 
able to bring back um, one guidance counselor. Uh, we were also, due to uh, grant uh, funding, able to bring back a SPED department head position, um, and that grant uh, could only fund that position. Uh, we were also able, due to a grant, uh, to fund an adapted phys ed, phys ed position, and due to the retirement of an additional uh, phys ed um, position, we were then able to bring back another high school phys ed position um, and with some savings uh, an, ad an additional adapted phys ed um, teacher. We also then, um, because the superintendent uh, and her finance, finance team uh, reviewed the revolving community school account, uh, recommended that uh, we fund uh, the position of Edison Academy principal, uh, which basically uh, addresses 420 registered students and also um, we reviewed a recommendation to bring back a data processing person who works on uh, mainly community school type of uh, program programmatic work as well as other work for the district uh, and those two positions were uh, able to be restored uh, or recommended to be restored through the funding through the community school revolving account. Um, so that position is an administrative assistant. Okay. So that data processing person is an ad administrative assistant. Okay. All my chicken scratch notes. It was good. Well, I, th I think that summarizes it pretty much. Um, that was on the fly tonight. So, um, so I need a motion, Mr. Sullivan, let's put you on the spot um, to bring back um, those uh, three teaching positions, the guidance counselor position, the SPED department head, the adapted phys ed to the high school phys ed, the Edison Academy principal, and the data processing administrative assistant position. So moved. All right. <laughs> a second from someone, please. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, very good. All right, that was good. Um, okay, new business. Does anyone have any new business to discuss? Mr. Sullivan, you looked like you were ready to. I just wanted to talk to Mr. McCrina if I could. Mr. McCrina. Mr. McCrina. I just wanted to talk to you. Could you this come committee, we don't set the money that comes to us. Well, our budget is to take that money okay. and yeah. be able to open the doors yeah. in September. Okay. So we, we take the money okay. that is given to us and we try to balance the budget. Under new business. Just so you know that we've had finance meetings every single Tuesday night for the whole summer. And more than once, the music, Classes have been brought up. There's a number of us on this committee that don't want to see any cuts in the music department at all. I just didn't want you to walk out saying, geez, nobody really cared. I just wanted you to know that we hear you 100 percent. We're trying to get everything back to where it was. But I feel as an administrator, I'm a chairman, that's my job. No, I just wanted to thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All set, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Gormley? Yes, I'd um, like to take the time to recognize a few um, alumni groups that I've been able to take part in um, that had events over the last uh, two or three weeks since we last met. Um, the first one is the Brockton Basketball um, Alumni Group. It's a made up of uh, basketball players uh, from Brockton High School over the last, oh, well, Mr. Thomas left. He's probably the oldest one that was involved. Um, but <laughs> it's spearheaded by Derek Williams, who is um, from the class of 09 who I actually coached when he was 10. Um, and another young man by the name of Dominique Russell, who um, have put together an annual clinic 
uh, at the high school where uh, alumni come back, coach the clinic. It's a free clinic. Everybody gets a t-shirt. They get fed. Uh, and they get to interact with uh, former Brockton High School basketball players. Uh, and it's been a great thing the last two years. Uh, Mr. Thomas has been really integral in helping uh, Derek plan. Uh, I've given him a hand when I can. Um, I think Derek should be recognized for that. Um, it's, it, it's been over 100 kids participated the last two years, and it's free. Um, I, I know they've received some local support, too, from different businesses. Um, but there are a few different groups doing things like this. Um, the football alumni have sponsored um, clinics, too. And then um, in track, Joe Lamar put together a track alumni meet on this past Saturday that uh, I had the opportunity to participate in. Uh, Joe was one of my coaches. And we brought together around 20 former BHS track athletes to uh, relive what little glory we have left. Um, <laughs> out on the track and Mr. Jennings who was uh, most of the people's uh, coach was there Bill Jennings who got the ICU not yet one of the best people you'd ever want to meet uh, just a great guy and was a really successful coach here um, and it's it's another alumni group that is giving back the money raised was given to the alumni foundation um, that was established recently for their banquet um, and to get them jackets or whatever they need uh, we had a group go to New York um, last year and we didn't have a ton of money to give but there was a little bit donated. Um, so th there are a few people uh, around in different alumni groups that are been doing their own things and, and doing some great things in the city especially t uh, giving back um, and there's somebody in community schools uh, his name is Bob Salzman and he's been someone I've got to know a little bit throughout helping folks um, organize these events and Bob is a part-time consultant. He, he right now is uh, coming on as alumni development. We're right. trying to establish a development office. And, and what he's doing is he's bringing all these groups together and creating a database and he's been really attentive uh, and he's doing a great job of, of trying to pool the resources of all the alumni groups. So if you're an alumni and you're part of an alumni group, please reach out to community schools um, to get your group involved with what Bob is doing because what Bob is doing is really important to what we can do going forward um, as, as citizens and alumni. We have alumni in all 50 states and numerous countries uh, and, and we have over 50,000 graduates uh, in Brockton, uh, from Brockton High School throughout the country. Uh, so we have a great network out there and uh, Bob's really doing some great stuff trying to, to uh, bring that network closer together. Uh, so. If you are part of a group, um, please get in touch with them. And, and thank you to the people I mentioned. Uh, it, it's, it's really nice to see people give back um, because it's such a nice experience being uh, an alumni of this school, uh, and especially when you win if you're an athlete. <laughs> it's nice to come back. But it's great to see people that I have been involved with, especially Derek and Joe, uh, giving back. So, Great. Mr. D'Agostino. Yeah, I kind of stumbled upon um, an organization called Above the Clouds that I wanted to uh, talk about. Um, had the opportunity to support a fundraiser that they were doing um, last week. And uh, there are um, several kids from Brockton that are um, participating in this program and um, getting some opportunities. And I just wanted to share a little bit about what they do. Um, the program takes place over at Norwood Airport. Um, <clears throat> and they have a uh, couple programs, one called the Dream Flyers program where children who are dealing with medical issues or disabled, underprivileged, experiencing homelessness and suffering from loss of a family member um, are given a once in a lifetime chance to uh, take a dream flight um, and be in the co-pilot seat of a uh, small airplane or helicopter. Um, and then they also have the Discovery Flyers program um, where teenagers are introduced to aviation by Discovery pilot mentors. Um, and they get the opportunity to fly regularly with um, these mentors. And the uh, third program that they have, uh, Cadet Flyers, is a, um, a direct response to the number, growing number of young people who are either falling through the cracks in schools or are involved with social services due to poverty issues 
um, and difficult home situations, and this gives them, again, those opportunities to participate in aviation um, over there. And uh, so this is a great organization I kind of stumbled upon accidentally, and, and a friend of mine's on their board, and that's how uh, I had the opportunity to support them. And um, I'm, I'm hoping maybe I can get them to come in, uh, to one of our meetings at some point and uh, tell us more about what they do. But um, it, it was a great opportunity that some of our kids are taking advantage of. Wonderful. Anyone else? Ms. Azak. Next Saturday is Summerfest. Perfect. From 8 to 5 at Brockton High School. So if you had more info on that, um, this is probably our last televised meeting before yes. then. So if we can just remind everyone, is Mr. Manchel going to go over that? Yes. Um, well, we'll just pick up where you left off. Summerfest, August 19th, Saturday from 10 to 3 at Brockton High School. Um, it says 8 to 5 on, on our events. Hmm. Maybe set up is 8 o'clock? So that's uh, our friend Bill McCauley and his team, and uh, they do a wonderful job. It's very well attended every year. Um, it's, a nice, um, it's a nice take for families. There's always a lot of activities, and um, the, the children have a, uh, they always have a good time. So uh, if you um, are available and would like to attend, please do. Um, it's, uh, it'll be coming up faster than you think. Um, We'll be having advocacy booths set up. I think the alumni is going to have a booth set up. We've got a number of things where we'll do outreach to parents. Um, the other thing is that I wanted to mention, I did have the opportunity to attend the uh, Edison Academy graduation. Um, approximately 200 students uh, graduated. And um, you know, it, it, there was uh, so much excitement in the room, uh, family and friends. The, the auditorium was packed and um, you know, when um, some of the students came up getting their diplomas, I, if, if there was a gap and there was a little bit of time, I would ask them what their future plans were. And a lot of them are going to Massasoit. A lot of them are going to uh, vocational uh, training type of schools. Um, it's um, a program, I believe, that um, is so um, you know needed in this community. Um, it was basically a um, program that uh, the superintendent put um, a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears in and um, saw a need and really, um, I believe, has uh, flourished. Uh, and I think that um, having it at the high school, I think, is a motivator because I think it, um, the setting, uh, you know, is, is, you know, your surroundings, I think, have an impact on your motivation. So I think that having it here at the high school um, reinforces in these students that um, um, they're important, that they're at a, at, you know, at, at, at Brockton High School, which is, you know, the flagship of the um, community, and, um, you know, it was just a really nice event, and um, you could see the excitement and um, you know, the bright future for a lot of these um, graduates. Some of the graduates um, were as old as me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them um, were students that uh, you know, work full time during the day and um, have commitments um, that um, make it so much tougher and so much sweeter that they accomplish that goal that they set themselves uh, out to do. And um, you could tell that their families were so excited for them and, and proud of them. And, they, they, they had every right to be proud for themselves because they really worked so hard to get that diploma. So, um, you know, that's really what Brockton's all about. So that was a wonderful, um, wonderful event. So you have graduated this year over 1,220 students from your high school mm -hmm. to the Goddard, um, to the Keith Center, to your Edison Academy, to your summer school program, 1,220 students. Oh, I'm looking for a piece of paper, but I can't find it, but that's all right. Um, yeah, this isn't the one, but okay. So uh, the next item we just want to basically touch upon is um, the equity in education lawsuit. We are um, going full bore ahead. Uh, we're working with um, Hesse Tumi and Lahane, uh, Sarah Catagnani, and uh, our attorney, as well as uh, attorney Kevin Bresnahan, and we um, um, will be uh, putting this 
case together. Um, we really do feel that <clears throat> this um, funding mechanism that has been uh, every year, it seems, changed um, to the detriment of the city of Brockton, really, in the last couple of years uh, dramatically. Um, we are, um, I think, ripe for this lawsuit. Um, the um, Chapter 70 Review Committee has basically highlighted all of the different um, issues that require additional funding in their recommendation, and Brockton hits upon every single mark. So um, uh, that will be happening sooner rather than later, and um, we will um, keep the public informed as to the progress. Um, we are moving forward, as I said, with a meeting with uh, an attorney from a nonprofit, Matt Krieger, uh, Ira Fader from the MTA, uh, our attorneys, as you said, Sarah Catignani, Kevin Brezhnihan, and we will be looking to file a complaint. We are going to be looking for a lead plaintiff. So that would be one of our young students who was harmed by the uh, inequity uh, in education uh, being served, <coughs> excuse me, to our youngsters. So this will be moving sooner than later. Um, we're going to plan to meet and to, uh, as I said, I met with uh, Attorney Catignani. She went over quite a bit of history, talked about the courts, um, what we would have to do to file. So I do feel like we're on our way. And we are hopeful that other communities will join us. In fact, I'm sure they will. But we will move forward to, uh, to, to file our complaint. I, did, I wasn't going crazy. I did find this piece of paper I was looking for. So um, normally we do not have executive session, but tonight we do. So uh, just to let the public know, uh, the school committee will be going into executive session uh, to address uh, a uh, certified grievance hearing. And um, we will not be reconvening here. So um, once we go in, uh, I would basically say to everyone, have a good evening and um, we will see you next time. Um, so when we go into executive session, there is a requirement uh, that the school committee have a roll call vote. So with regard to tonight, the school committee will go into executive session in accordance with MGL chapter 30A, section 21A3 to hold a level three B certified grievance hearing and will not reconvene. Uh, we will uh, adjourn and which will allow our friends at cable to um, break down their equipment and then we will have our hearing in the music room. So, uh, roll call vote to go into executive session. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. Mr. Gormley? Yes. Ms. Plant? Yes. Mr. D'Agostino? Yes. And Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And yes for me. Okay, so uh, we will basically uh, adjourn the um, this portion of our meeting and uh, Thank you all for attending. Good night.